We are here at the North Carolina Museum of Dolls, Toys, and Miniatures in Spencer, North Carolina, just across the street from the Transportation Museum. Our museum houses several thousand artifacts that celebrate childhood and playthings and range in materials from porcelain to bisque, composition, wood, cloth, and both soft and hard plastic and represent periods from as early as the late 1800s to today. We house the largest Shirley Temple collection in the Southeast, and we have been recognized as one of 35 of North Carolina's most unforgettable museums. We are the only doll, toy, and miniature museum left in the state. I want to show you these gorgeous Bob Mackie Barbies that have a special story. The North Carolina Museum of Dolls, Toys and Miniatures is dedicated to the preservation, conservation, study, collecting, and appreciation of dolls, toys, and miniatures, and was founded in 2012 by the Morris and Nance families in honor of their family member, Amy Don Morris. Amy was a passionate collector of dolls and miniatures, but succumbed to wardening Hoffman disease, a rare muscle wasting condition, just two weeks shy of her 22nd birthday. Soon afterward, the museum opened its doors with her cherished collection of dolls and miniatures. Bob Mackie, who is in his 80s, is a celebrity designer who has dressed A-listers such as Judy Garland, Diana Ross, Marilyn Monroe, and Cher. In 1992, when Mattel launched a closed mouth version of its superstar sculpt, it was used for the Neptune fantasy doll and became known as the Mackie sculpt from then on. When we talk about the different sculpts and what constitutes a Bob Mackie sculpt, this is the superstar sculpt with an open mouth. The Bob Mackie sculpt has a closed mouth. Bertha Alexander was born in 1895 in New York. Her biological father actually passed away when she was just one and a half years old. Her mom remarried Maurice Alexander, and that's who Bertha came to consider her father. Maurice Alexander was actually a toy dealer who ran one of the first doll hospitals in the country. So firsthand, Bertha got to know the world of dolls and doll repairs, and she also witnessed how upset children would get when their bisque or china dolls would become damaged or broken. In the early 1900s, Bertha would actually change her name to Beatrice because she just felt it sounded more romantic. As time passed, Beatrice was inspired to produce more cloth dolls, especially because they'd be harder for kids to break or damage as they played with them. And it was really important to her to encourage that kind of creative play for kids. In 1923, in a one-room studio with a $1,600 loan, Beatrice established the Alexander Doll Company. She hired her sisters and her neighbors as her earliest team members. It was a team of just 16 people. And around this time, she started calling herself by that name that we know and love today, Madame Alexander. The cloth dolls that she produced 
had mask-like faces, they had yarn hair, and they ranged from 7 inches tall to 30 inches tall. Madame Alexander loved literary and storybook characters, so some of her dolls during this time were Alice in Wonderland inspired, inspired by Little Women, Little Shaver, Susie Q, and Bobby Q. In the 1930s and 40s, this was kind of the time when composition dolls made of wood pulp, glue, and other materials, they were really popular because they were easy to mold, easy to paint, and they were usually very durable away from moisture or extreme temperatures. She produced tiny and little Betty dolls inspired by many different storybook, literary, and international characters. The Wendy Ann face was actually the first doll from a licensed character. That was Scarlet from Gone with the Wind. And that was two years before the Gone with the Wind movie was actually released in 1939. Wendy Ann got to be a bride, a bridesmaid, a fairy princess, and she even was a military woman during World War II. And in the mid-1940s, the Margaret face sculpt came out. That was styled after Margaret O'Brien, child star of the Alice in Wonderland movie. And that sculpt would remain popular for almost a decade. In 1947, Madame Alexander introduced the first plastic face mold, which actually revolutionized the doll making industry. Hard plastic dolls were even more durable than composition dolls, and they allowed for really fine details in the facial features and the fingers. In 1953, Madame Alexander introduced her iconic Alexander Kin dolls. And then in 1955, Madame Alexander introduced the first fashion doll in America, Sissy. This self-proclaimed queen of fashion dolls was also the first with high-heeled feet. Sissy dolls would remain some of the best dressed, most collected, and even most valuable dolls made during the 1950s. Her innovations really um, continued with the production of really early vinyl heads in the 1950s. There were more Wendy Kin dolls in the 1960s and Brenda Starr joined the family in 1964. Then in the early 1960s, in honor of the First Lady, a 21-inch Jacqueline doll was produced. By 1965 was the arrival of Polly and her friend Leslie. And then in 1966 came the glamorous but often hard to find Coco dolls, which were 20 inches. Madame Alexander dolls are still widely loved, and that's in part because of just the exquisite detail of their clothing, and also the delicate hand-painted look of their faces. One really special part of our collection at the museum is actually a selection of personal items that belong to Madame Alexander. You may notice that she is wearing gloves to handle them, and that's because our hands actually produce oils that can harm the surface of metals. So gloves are the best way for us to protect these really special, precious items so we can prevent deterioration and just keep them in the best condition possible for visitors and Madame Alexander fans to come to the museum and enjoy.